Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Hope you've had a great start to the new year. Let's dig in with this week's Threat Snapshot. So we're going to be talking about OA SSRF. Uh, this is an exploit that's been seen in the wild. POCs are available, threat actors are using it. Uh, if you've been tracking the whole proxy shell, proxy not shell from last year, uh, this OA, OA SSRF is in that same class, that same fan, family here. So we are targeting Microsoft Exchange servers. Again, these are going to be um, self-hosted, uh, you know, on-prem instances, not an Office 365, you know, edition hosted by Microsoft. And uh, as the name implies, OA, so that's going to be targeting the Outlook web application portion of this. And SSRF is server-side request forgery. So that's a web application attack where we can get it to execute remote commands on the server. Um, so again, CrowdStrike discovered this activity back in December. Um, again, it's very similar to that proxy not shell family. And uh, we can see here even from the URL, uh, the proxy not shell typically was targeting that autodiscover.json endpoint and uh, you know, still being able to run arbitrary PowerShell by hitting that PowerShell endpoint on the background. And this new exploit method um, is using that OA endpoint. So if you're looking at the web access logs here from IAS, you would see something like this where you're going to see the attacker posting to slash OA, uh, the email address that they're using um, that's a compromised valid account, and then this uh, slash PowerShell to hit that endpoint. Um, so again, the really important part of this here and why this one was unique is um, so for the uh, proxy not shell, a lot of times people would use um, web access rules, the rewrite rules to uh, try and prevent, uh, you know, those URLs if they contain PowerShell or uh, that auto discover that JSON together um, in the same request. So it actually block those malicious requests. And those rules are clearly failing here because this was targeting a different endpoint instead of auto discover, it was uh, targeting OWA. So still hitting that remote PowerShell endpoint, that is you know really the critical piece here, but it's a different vector. Um, patches are available. So Microsoft put these out um, back in November for a proxy not shell. Um, this is still effective here for OSSRF, but uh, ultimately you know definitely do patch this. Um, this has been actively exploited in the wild, and um, Huntress has put together some additional information on some campaigns that they've seen, particularly a lot of the um, post-exploitation attempts with um, additional PowerShell exploits uh, or additional PowerShell attacks using Bits Admin um, and some post-exploitation modules. Um, so they have some, some rules, some detections around there. Um, some really good stuff. I'll save those links. Um, let's actually pivot over to Snap Attack. Let's take a look at these. Um, as I did mention before, there are POCs available. Um, two that I'll just kind of call out by name. So obviously CrowdStrike, they wrote up the POC when they were uh, replicating this. And then there's another Python one here that is the version that we're actually going to be able to use. Um, like I did mention, this is a post-authenticated remote code execution, so you have to have a valid account, um, you know, compromised credentials needed for this, uh, but that generally is going to be pretty trivial for the attacker. So can take a look at this threat here in Snap Attack. We have a Windows machine here. This is going to be running Exchange, uh, and then we do have our Linux host here. I'm going to back up the video here. Um, we are going to uh, very simply come up with a, our malicious command to run. Um, super malicious here. We're just going to echo snap attack to a file um, on the C drive, but we could certainly um, do a reverse shell. That's going to be very common for a lot of these attackers. Um, you know, you saw bits admin being used to, you know, download, execute a file. Um, you can live off the land, certainly. Lots of creative things here. And uh, so this POC, again, we need to target the exchange server. So that's the URL, the command you want to run, and then the valid um, account here, the mailbox. So snap attack was their username and our password here. Um, so you can see here, this is going to run that request a couple of times. We do have that successful attack. Uh, we can take a look what activity was happening here on the timeline, and we can see that there are detections around here. Uh, this particular technique, again, does show very well in the process graph. So. IIS um, is running here, so that's going to be the w3wp.exe. Um, that's where the uh, Outlook web app OA is going to be uh, residing on the server. And you're going to see pretty clearly here that there's this PowerShell.exe that is being spawned from the IIS process. 
And you can also see here that this has some, some really nice Base64 encoded PowerShell. Uh, if you decode that, that's going to be the command that we wanted executed to uh, drop that file on the file system in the C folder. Um, again, if we were doing something a little bit more nefarious, you know, that would certainly be, you know, calling out to other IPs for your C2 or other things like that. So um, this parent-child relationship, again, is one of the ways that I would detect it. And I guess if we want to pivot over, um, how would I hunt for, you know, this attack? How would I detect this in my network? Um, if you do have EDR uh, data available and you're looking for that on an endpoint, um, you could certainly use a detection like this. Um, this one being more robust, so you are looking obviously for W3WP, but it's going to be looking at other web servers. So Nginx, uh, Apache, HTTPD, you know, you know, PHP, you know, Tomcat, others um, looking for specific processes. And again, it could be PowerShell in this case, but, you know, CMD or others. So detections like this are pretty good at looking for a lot of web, web shell activity in general. And uh, even though this isn't a web shell, this is still going to be very similar um, you know, to that behavior where there's some unusual processes being spawned from a web server. Um, also call out a couple from the Sigma community. Um, so these were contributed recently around the OSSRF. Um, if you do have proxy logs, um, you can certainly look for those. Um, again, it's going to look very similar to the web access request. So you're looking for that post data that has um, OWA and PowerShell in the URL. Um, you can do some, again, they have some basic filtering here to, um, you know, whitelist some noisy things that might be um, common in the environment. So like the exchange backend probes. Um, so again, use those if you have access to that data. Another option is the uh, actual web server logs themselves. Again, a lot of times some organizations aren't going to be forwarding that um, off of the host. So that might be a little bit harder to access. But if you do have that availability, it's going to look very similar to the proxy log when this um, ends up compiling. So um, definitely take a look at those. Um, you know, with Snap Attack, we make those very easy to deploy to your configured environments and helps you to stay ahead of threats like OSSRF.